Hey guys, welcome to Tales Late Podcast, a place for independent filmmakers covering anything and everything from onset experiences to what's happening at the movies. I'm your host Farid Kyron, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host Toby. How you doing there, Toby? Hey guys, welcome back to the Spider Show. I mean, Tales Late's film podcast. Yeah, I I don't know what the Spider Show is. Just don't get us sued. So today we are. It's a show all about spiders. Who, who would have thought? Actually, I thought it was about it... kangaroos, man. Like, what's that about? No, that's 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 because you have a learning deficiency. Okay, so we're gonna move on. We, <laughs> so uh, I wanted to basically, uh, so basically, we, yeah, Toby and I we we talked about this a little, and we thought that maybe for this episode, since we've had so many guests on our show, we've had DPs, we've had directors, and all that, um, we figured for this one we just kind of go back to the basics and just have just a conversation between the two of us, between Toby and myself, just you know, shooting the shit basically and just covering what's on our minds right now. And so we hope you enjoy this one. Um, so Toby, yeah. do you want to tell us exactly why we're doing this? Like what's the motive behind it? <laughs> yeah, I can say why. Uh, I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled out and I'm going to be in a huge amount of pain and we didn't want to have a guest on the week that uh, I had to go to the dentist. So recording this in advance so when you're listening to this it's because i'm in a lot of pain and i hope that makes someone out there very happy it is pretty easy to make some enemies in the filmmaking community so um i'm sure there's going to be someone out there reeling at that prospect um plus not, ne- not necessarily an enemy just someone who like really likes the idea of me being in pain they they could love me it's just that see, see, something was... about me being in pain like is a pleasant thought see i was talking oh, no. see i was talking about myself actually so but but it's okay we can we can move oh. on from i was it was going to be a plot twist that i wanted to kind of throw in there um yeah I well oh well in the way. i guess we ruined that tell you what i'm gonna ignore that you said that and then we can still have that awesome plot twist perfect perfect it'll come back again later you know all things go full circle in, in a good story oh, i'm sure yeah so yeah. so i don't know man like all right um you know since being that like okay i'm calling you from india right now so back in india situation's not pretty pretty good you know it's not great with uh, the virus and even beyond that like uh, i'm kind of quarantining you know i'm you know just just trying to get a watch list going trying to trying to force myself to you know do some like body weight stuff just just to work out i suppose it's it's been really like you know self-contained and you're in france right now and over there i think lockdown's over now right so it's pretty much Lockdown um, is over, and uh, they are set started opening restaurants and stuff and a few bars, but it's it's also I think people need to be very cautious. Uh, I've gone out a couple times and I've had a few people over in my house, but I I try to keep it a very limited amount of people and I try to keep it outside for the most part, not because I don't trust them, not because but to be safe, you know, and uh, I I don't feel. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable going indoors to meet someone, especially not wearing a mask, you know? So that that's where I am right now. We are indeed living in the midst of, you know, a fair deal of paranoia. And what are you kind of doing? I, I want to spin this on more of a, I guess, from a filmic perspective. Like, what are you doing exactly right now to just, um, I guess, find a means of escapism from that through film? You know, like, what, what kind of, what are you kind of using? Well, I mean, it's... Uh... It's interesting that you use that word escapism because uh, obviously film is entertainment and we use it to escape, to find a new world, to enjoy this world of fiction. But also I try to use film to be proactive, to find a way to make it work. I'm right now doing the shot list for my film that I'm doing in October and uh, I'm trying to watch films and uh, specifically nature documentaries that will help me have the right uh, mindset for this particular project. It's something I do with every single film. Once we have the shot list, once we kind of understand what the visual style we're going for, we try to emulate other films that have done that. In this particular one, I'm emulating nature documentaries. And also, I started watching Friends. That's an interesting segue. I mean, uh, Friends Friends isn't the most popular. It's not the most popular nature documentary I've seen, but it's up there. (laughs) I mean, uh, that it's not about the film. It's more because people keep talking about it, and I never really got it. I, I, I never. I saw How I Met Your Mother. I had a fun time with that. I really love Community. Um, I guess I grew up on like those Disney Channel sitcoms, but 
I, I, I'm not a huge so fan Raven. of sitcoms. It's the future I can see. <laughs> yeah, me too, bro. Not to mention yeah, Liz, exactly. Liz, Lizzie McGuire, bro. I, wa- uh, I wanted to be Gordo when I was Lizzie nine. McGuire, Sweet yeah. Life of Zack and Co- yeah. Cody. Um, I guess the... I, I wouldn't really call Community a sitcom. I would consider Big Bang Theory or How I Met Your Mother or uh, Family Matters a sitcom. And I, and I watched a lot of Family Matters uh, growing up. But it was never like, oh, man, this is something important to me. It was... It's just like... It's a sitcom. It's why? kind of something is it, I is can it, live is it, without it. But why? For, is it because it's so kind of, it's so disposable in the episodes, like the content? It, you just go with it and you're like, whatever. Why is it Why I, is I, it so, so meaningless? I want to get to that. I want to get to that because I don't think it's meaningless because here's the thing. I started watching Friends and the first season I, I kind of didn't like. I was like, well, these guys don't really seem like some people that I'd want to spend time with, you know? Like, uh... I'm watching this show, like, Rachel seems very spoiled. Ross is pining after this girl without ever expressing his emotions. Like, just confess, man. Just mm-hmm. get it over with. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm not a fan of Phoebe. Okay, I guess I like... Okay, I guess I like the other three. Fine. I like Monica and uh, Joey and Chandler. Yeah. But, <laughs> but what I'm trying to get at is I, I, I don't... Like, I would be crossing my hands. I would be like, I don't understand this show. Why do people like it? But I'd find myself clicking on the next episode. And throughout that, like right now I'm just starting season four, which, by the way, is the season where they choose to become weirdly abusive to each other. Ah, oh, that's right. <laughs> but um, that's a, that I, would felt like a natural progression yeah, of events. But, yeah. Of course, they're, they're not the nicest people. They're, they're yeah, going mean, to start being pretty vicious eventually. Yeah. <laughs> It's. I remember the fourth year of us being friends, Fareed. That was very abusive. I. I think I cut off your arm or something with a machete. Okay, if that was the case, this is this is the fourth year of our friendship. So if that happened, I'd remember, and I, I don't. I don't remember that happening. Um, oh, okay. maybe that was a dream. Also, just I, I, this could be evidence, but I do have my arm attached, so maybe it didn't happen. Continue, continue on on your sophisticated. I found myself always clicking on the. Ne- mm-hmm. Analysis of friends. Yeah, deconstruction. Now, if you can really see here, what does Ross uh, stand on the food chain? What does he? uh, What is he a metaphor for when it comes to the American supply chain? Oh, um, I think he represents the uh, stock market. You know, like (laughs) it's like very interesting. Oh yes, and Chandler clearly is a is uh, is a metaphor for the Trail of Tears, and uh, Joey is Andrew Jackson. It, it makes so much sense. I feel like this um, is a mistake. <laughs> it is. It is. It's a huge mistake. It's a mistake for me to watch any TV, honestly. <laughs> no, I think friends. Um, tell me. So tell me. Tell me. Like about what you were saying with season But four. the point I keep dancing around is, although I kept saying, I don't get it. This, it's not that good. It's not that funny. Yeah. I find myself clicking another one. And at a certain point, it wasn't even that I was like, oh, I'm doing this for the experiment. I genuinely noticed that my anxieties my worries my fears went away and i don't usually feel that when i watch movies i i can tell you uh i have a really good story i'll bring up later but i I don't usually feel that i don't usually watch movies that make me feel just all my worries go away i like to why that's odd watch movies that why i don't know i i usually like to watch movies that make me confront something or deal with it even if it's a kids movie or something I mean, you know I mean, maybe like one of my favorite movies Wreck-It, is Wreck-It I thought, Ralph I thought of Wreck-It it's... Ralph immediately when you said that dude because I because having known you I mean maybe it's that because Wreck I mean look I don't know but like those movies feel like they're have you seen Wreck-It Ralph yet? I did eventually catch the first like not okay not all of it bro but I was gonna Yay. mention like I was gonna mention like Toy Story or, or, or Wally or something you know it's mm-hmm. like which are yeah. all, way off but maybe it's a case of these because these films are kind of obviously primed to be a adventure escapist films right they are meant to be like a leave your worries mm-hmm. out the door yeah. for two hours maybe it's just that you, they're very escapist but you go into them perhaps pining for something uh else because maybe as a creative that's an inherent uh some, inherently something you're drawn to perhaps i don't know it's interesting like finding the finding the the complexity in in, a, in, in like an escapist th- I mean, technically everything is escapist in a way, right? But like in a, in the sense that you yeah. you go out and you you watch. I mean, I want to get I want to. You forget you about your worries. Yeah, yeah, but it, like if it's funny that you say that because knowing your film taste, like mo- a lot of the films you love 
feel like exact because even in tone they're often like very light and very like welcoming you know like so i wonder why yeah then you don't feel like oh like i'm still kind of in that in that state so elaborate please tell me tell me more well i guess and this is this is the reason why on paper i really should hate friends because as a uh, robert make uh key says in his book story there needs to be a respect for the idea of truth when you write a story when you put these thoughts on a page when you come up with these ideas and you set up these characters and put them in the situation in the final moments in that art in that arc you show what is your truth and that truth like that's something that can't you can't fake if you don't even believe that truth your script won't work your story won't work and friends i never believe in truth there like sometimes you'll have an episode where i'm like oh no monica got fired and then her friends are there together they forget about the fight and they're just there for her and oh that's nice but usually i find it's that they do something which could come with a which could be solved with a very simple solution they avoid it and are in the end rewarded or not maybe not rewarded in the sense they get what they want but the universe the audience the story treats us as if no, this is fine. Well, listen, I I and feel I feel like you're kind on of, paper. I should really hate that. Yeah, but for some reason, it it it, it makes you want to tune into the next episode. Yeah, for some reason, it just makes me genuinely think that oh, everything will work out, and I think that's such a comforting, lovely thought. But I also know it's not healthy. I know it's not healthy to believe that whatever you do, whatever bad actions you do, it'll work out fine in the end. That's how we get people who are fine with turning a blind eye to when things are bad for someone else. You're like, well, it would work out in the end. That's great. But for the, right now, that person is hurt and they need help. You can't just say it will work out and thoughts and prayers and then be, go on your merry way. You need to help. Things need to change. There needs to be reform. And to do that, it takes effort and it takes going through that tough spot. And you can't just hope for comfortable and stuff. But, but it still helps me. Forget about my anxieties this is the most, for a while. This is the most philosophically tinged conversation I've had about friends, which is, uh, <laughs> which sure, I'll. T I mean, look, I, I think, uh. dude, I think you shouldn't go into these shows though. With like, you, you're, you're. I mean, I'm quite amazed that you. I mean, because I think it's more about you than the show, uh, in a way. When I when I say this, but I'm amazed you were able to derive, um, you know, such a moral dilemma out of a show that's that's effectively so kind of. I mean, I don't want to say straightforward, but again, kind of simplistic in its like mm -hmm. approach. Maybe what's happening is that you're like, you know, the kind of characters that you're seeing, maybe they, they trigger something in you as a storyteller. And, and, and I think that um, it's like you can't help but see what's going to happen next because they are kind of doing stuff that you shouldn't necessarily abide by and you probably don't. But it's like maybe maybe there's also a yeah. in there's like a hook. There's like a double edged, you know, like a hook there of like or, or sword mm -hmm. rather of like. Yeah, I don't really abide by what I'm seeing, but maybe, you know, maybe that yeah. that sensation of, hey, it might go somewhere nice, maybe that's what's keeping you going, you know. I, I, I can't say, but it sounds to me like that's kind of maybe. what it is. I mean, dude, look, I, um, man, all I asked you was, hey, what do you, I mean, what do you watch could, during quarantine? I could be overthinking it. <laughs> I think, because it's like, hey, man, what do you, yeah, like, what do you uh, watch how during quarantine? How are you doing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's like, listen, you know what? what's right in the world is you have to follow your, your, your instincts and your choice. I was like, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> no, but it's great. It's like, so Toby, uh, is there anything you watch just to get your mind off things? Yes, but it makes me severely depressed. Why? Because it doesn't make me depressed, and I think that's a bad thing. All right. So, uh, that's, uh, oh my gosh. So to our listeners, I, I mean, I, like, I'd like to introduce I... our next guest, uh, Mr. Franz Kafka. Would, would you like to welcome uh, on the podcast, Toby? No, I... Uh, you were saying, bro. <laughs> Just uh, uh, I I mean there it's a there's a high there's a very high chance that I'm just overthinking a simple sitcom. That's just it's about these friends. They hang out in a coffee shop. They have their own things, and the wacky shenanigans happen. Like maybe it's simple like that. I do want to add something though, because the thing is like yes to a degree because again it is friends but I, I also think no i think you were on to something um it's a slight diversion from what you what you were saying but at the same time links up nicely to that whole concept of why would i want to spend time with these characters um i do think that there's a little bit of a challenge when um when you find a, a film or a show where the characters aren't necessarily you know morally let's say as just as you maybe like, let's say if you met that person in real life, you know. And when you when you're when you're watching shows like that, right? I, I often find myself like, 
it it's like it 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 piques more my interest than my actual like resonance towards the show. You know, it's like I I for example, once mm. you get the season four of Breaking Bad, like it wasn't so much that I cared for Walt, although technically there were of course little things which makes you kind of wanna you yeah. know latch on to him. But I didn't really like him anymore as a person. But it was purely that kind of duality, but also the fact that I also in a way repulsed by what he did but at the same time so engrossed by mm -hmm. his actions that I was like but what happens next and because you're watching you know for example yeah. if, and if you take that and if you put it if you put Breaking Bad into Friends which is a, a, a hybrid no one wants to see but if you if you take Friends like your joy comes with like a bald head and like meth like we have to cook Rossia no but if <laughs> it's like you're a doctor aren't you I'm a paleontologist Th that's there's gotta be something that paleontologists and drugs just make the meth can you imagine like, like an episode of Friends end with like they're in like that trailer and then like the blue meth is created and then the QR music is new okay. new 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 that would have got me <laughs> okay so Ross I'm gonna say Ross is uh Walter White Joey is Jesse uh Rachel is Skyler mm. um Chandler is Walter, the lawyer. Walter Jr. Saul. I thought you were going to say Walter Jr. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? He's both. He plays the dual roles. Wow. He plays both roles. <laughs> uh, Phoebe is uh, Marie, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Monica is Gus. Man, I'm pretty sure, like, this is too smart of an idea for it to have not been thought of by someone else. Like, I'm pretty sure you go to Warner Brothers or... I'm sure you, you go to AMC. Oh, no, AMC's done. I don't know. You go wherever, and they're like... <laughs> they, they green light the green light the show happened this year amc just doesn't exist anymore <laughs> yeah what am what in the morning no but you <laughs> i'm sorry you watch like okay you make your show right you make this like frenzing bad or whatever it's called you're like or like mm. breaking breaking friends you watch the, you you make this bad show friends and then and then one day i'm watching the new watching like like e or the news i, I flip the channel your face shows up it's like tobias masante acclaimed creator of breaking friends is now in jail for being sued by a lawsuit by two different filmmakers who claimed he stole their concept and it's like, like vince gilligan and the creator of friends <laughs> like, like he took our what's ours just the <laughs> He just like as a. I love how you said Vince Gilligan and the creator of Friends. <laughs> There's uh, some favoritism um, in the family, man. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> I, it's just the text is like this was all just a. Yeah. Uh, Tobias says that this was all just a ploy just to meet Vince Gilligan, and it's a photo of me like shaking Vince Gilligan's hand, but no, he's mad at me no, no, because I just even, stole his even idea. Better, even better, like and like he, the like creator he, of Friends mm -hmm. is just like getting his face pushed to the side because he's I'm just like just want to shake Vince Gilligan's hand dude you know I'm seeing it's funny you're, th that entire c scenario I'm seeing in the inside of a jail cell like I'm seeing you behind bars like extending your hand in like an orange you know the thing and then Vince Gilligan is shaking your hand like, <laughs> like and it's like you have that face which is like worth it you know you got that look. I'm I only have like two teeth you can tell that like uh, that prison hasn't been kind to me Oh my god, and that's how I met your mother. Okay, um, I want to find oh, yeah. a way to. Wow, well, okay, how do you how do you go on like to quote Lord of the Rings from from that? Um, do you want to just like <laughs> pitch like an episode of this show? I really don't want to do that. <laughs> Could there be any more money underneath the floorboards? I don't know. <laughs> so that was such a weird episode. You know, he goes under the thing and he like starts laughing. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Uh. It's so fantastic. It's fantastic, yeah. So, okay. So, I'm glad to hear that you've been watching Friends, even if it comes with this asterisk of making you ruminate out the window and reflect on the nature of life. But I... Yeah, because... Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I forget who it was. I think it was maybe Now You See This. Let me look this up. Now You See It. Uh, see, but I think you can see Who made Friends. a video about movies in the 90s. Oh, is it the take by Screen Prism? Like those like those cats who do the, the video essays? I don't know, man. There are a lot of them. Because you can derive yeah, a lot there's of the, meaning. Well, there's this one. F tell you what. You keep talking. I'm going to look this up real quick because I want to properly credit the person. Uh, okay. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so while you're, while you're looking for the person who will not sue you later, I... Um, so I've seen a couple of things actually. So the first thing, um, so I'm writing a horror movie right now, um, and uh, it's not Breaking Friends; it's something else. So I've been working on this horror movie, and so as research, I've been watching a bunch of horror films. So and my movie happens to be kind of like a haunted house film, kind of in disguise, not really, but sorta. So man, I've just been seeing movies that are about like two characters stuck in a place 
where you know it's not necessarily the place that's haunted but like the director uses atmosphere through the place if you know what i'm saying to evoke something um like the original haunting yeah the haunting, yeah or? yeah yeah very well i mean yeah with a little less of like that 80s kind wait wait of, wait, like, wait 80s wasn't it the, the haunting in the 80s i swear it was in the 80s no no maybe it's the you're talking about the remake but they're the original i think that would be great for you because it's like kind of this film where you don't even know if it's actually haunted or not if she's just going insane yeah i mean and it's it, yeah i think you would love it yeah i mean that that also well the innocence by jack layton from 1962 that's been the in fact that's exactly what uh that film is and i have been seeing that for the research my movie isn't so much about the place or anything it, it, a little bit but so yeah hereditary uh, the others the babadook uh, the innocence um, the Shining, and I have to shout out Doctor Sleep, which is super underrated. So I've just been watching those, and again, kind of like you, man, kind of a funny outlet to like, you know, like the world's going to shit. I'm gonna go watch a horrifying movie about like decapitation. Hi, Hereditary. It's a bit weird, but it's been, <laughs> it's been a good, it's been healthy, man. As a writer, like I can't help but, uh, you know, like watch Ari Aster. It's like it's like I'm, it's a combination of like jealousy. You're watching like he, he's so damn smart, and then you start typing, and then you you because like five minutes in, I was like, oh, I gotta write now because he just did something, but I want to do it better because I'm clearly better than you. <laughs> Go off and write. Isn't that just fantastic? How sometimes there's those movies or whatever where it's like or a show where you're like, okay, this show, eh, it's pretty fun. Oh, this show, I really like watching. Then there's a show like, oh my god, I wish I was in this writer's room and then there's this show which it's like oh it's so perfect so it's like wonderful. I, it's like i hate you <laughs> why didn't i come up yeah. with this i yeah. hate you for that yeah and then there's the penultimate one which is like i don't even trust myself to be anywhere near the production for this show because it's so beautiful just and back i'm afraid off. i'd mess it up just if back it back off bro I know. yeah like, that, that's the yeah. thing man like ari aster makes me want to retire man like seriously like i watched hereditary <laughs> i was like um because the thing is it's it's for me i, I there's like, a certain morbid pleasure i have of seeing horror movies that just yeah. nail it you know what i mean because when you make a great because there's a lot of shit out there as well but when you make a really great horror yeah. movie it just like it's like satisfies me you know it sounds weirdly sexual but you kind of know what i'm saying it, it just gets me it gets no, me. I, I i get i get what you're saying yeah you, it's like when it's well done it's a beautiful beautiful way to tell stories because you already have the audience in a certain space a certain emotion they're scared they're in suspense they're feeling that you can now now that their heart is open to you to those feelings you can now also tell a very amazing story yeah i mean that that's why horror films sometimes like some of them are shit you're right but most, some mo like most, there's bro, like most. candy man get out uh <laughs> most are shit yeah, man. uh the original halloween um scream uh, would you put the original saw in there? You think? Oh yeah, I love it. I love the first saw. It was the the only yeah. time when J uh, when James Wan used this like weird 360 degree camera and it didn't bother me. I think because it was the first time he did it, so he got away with it. Um, yeah, man, I, okay. I would put saw up there. So um, I yeah, man, I've been watching a lot of these films, and uh, yeah, what you said is true. I I think the other thing is I. I'm this kind of weird case where I tend to be very drawn to kind of darker storytelling, like darker content. Just, you know, when I was five years old, I ran around dressed up as Ghostface from Scream and uh, with a with a butter knife. So not much, you know. Um, so I've, you know, it's been in my. It's and in you my... were like stabbing people in the leg, right? I remember the story. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, and this is like in a in a little compound in India, bro. So it's pretty obscure, you know. It's like people don't know what that is. It's like, why? What's that? <laughs> What's he doing? Is this Diwali? No. Um, <laughs> So I basically uh, have always been that way, and uh, to to be to be clear though, mm -hmm. uh, you didn't actually stab anyone. You poked people with a butter knife. Uh, he was very young. He didn't stab anyone. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Now I'm definitely not going to jail, man. You find you you acquitted me. Thank you. So so listen, listen. Like it was really really necessary for you to say that. So it's I, necessary because we just said, oh yeah, you stab people in the leg, and then we laughed like maniacs. Can you imagine so. if, you, if you never cleared that? Important. Can you imagine if you never cleared that up? It's like oh yeah, like that time you stab yeah. people. Ha ha ha. You stab <laughs> someone in the leg. So friends, am I right? Just like like a doctor's watching this. Like I've got to get to the bottom of this. Like what's wrong? with them he like diagnoses us like oh you know yeah. <laughs> so i mean they can technically do that already you just like you just they're oversharing <laughs> this is too much like this outlet is getting too out of hand so i basically got a, how do i tell the story now so i um i've always been drawn to darker stuff um but the thing is i've 
in the ever-changing world that we live in right now where content is decidedly harder to get out there and, and, and to make your first movie or show, like, you know, you can't just be like, I'm going to make this dark drama about, about, I don't know, about family drama or whatever and expect the green light because it's not a very viable thing. Like, if you're very, very lucky, um, then maybe. But usually, I think Ari Aster said it best, like, you kind of need a genre to kind of put that in so you know if you want to yeah. make a like a, if you want to make a movie where a woman goes through a divorce and then finds herself in like albuquerque or whatever and decides to have a new life okay that's not a genre film that's like a like okay it's a film it's a character study now put that into that's like a drama it, well the, yeah but like a drama kind of it doesn't constitute like a genre film you know in the sense that a, a, yeah. a genre like yeah. put it into like now in an action movie it's not the or, we don't have enough films in the divorce genre to call it its own genre well, well, I mean, right, but what I meant was like, if you, in, it's, it's, it's kind the of a... The divorce cinematic universe. <laughs> Kevin Feige has run out of ideas. No, I, I think... uh, We start with marriage story, and then it's like, they, they keep going, and then they unify, <laughs> and they're like, it's one half of the divorce couple, and the other half, you get Kramer versus Kramer in this universe... He's basically like the Nick Fury of it don't, all. Don't do this. Don't do this. Marriage story. Stop. I don't know enough films about stop. divorce, so I'm going to stop no, please, there. But please. you know what I'm getting at. I don't want to know. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> like, what are you trying to say, man? What do you mean Nick Fury? Like, Mer Meryl Streep shows up in Marriage Story? Like, the Adam Driver's like, who the hell are you? I'm Meryl Streep from... Kimmer. I was going to say, uh, I was going <laughs> to... I mean, she doesn't even say like I'm I'm Kramer from Kramer versus Kramer. She says I'm Meryl <laughs> Streep from Kramer versus Kramer. <laughs> so the movie makes more money. It's like I'm here to talk to you about the divorce initiative. Yeah. It's like what? And then they team up in the end like Adam all, these, all these divorcees versus aliens or some shit. Where are we going with this? Uh, no. It's a bad movie, but like it, I would. Oh, man. It's a perfect the trailer from the creators what? of Breaking Friends. You know, it's like an, it's like comes a story, and it's like Adam Driver, Scarlett Johansson, but the divorce Scarlett Johansson, not Black Widow. It was Quinto. just so. <laughs> it was just so I could meet Greta Gerwig and tell her I like Little Women, and I know if I like in front plagiarized on Noah Bumbach, there'd be a chance I could say, "Hey, I really love Little Women." Okay, I'm sure I could two, write okay, a fan two, mail two letter things. to all of these people that I admire. But I have two things. I to guess not. I have two things to tell you. It's, it's Noah Baumbach. I know a Baumbach. Okay, that's one. Two. I don't think. I don't think. We've been Gerber... doing this podcast for ten weeks, and you're just telling me this now. <laughs> I think this Baumbach sounds like an insult. Anyway, and uh, Baumbach. <laughs> Wait. What, what? Okay. What? Baumbach or what? No. No. I think it's Baumbach. Baumbach. See, I'm gonna screw it up now. Baumbach. 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 What did I say? Baumbach. You said Baumbach. Oh, Baumbach. Yeah. You know what? Baumbach. You know what? Wait. Baumbach. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> Do <you buy> <laughs> so, so listen, I um good God. For the second thing I need to say is do you really think Greta, Greta Gerwig needs to be told like, hey, I liked your film, I'm sorry for everything you've been through. <laughs> <laughs> like, gets an Oscar. What? No, like, no, like, it's it's like, just. Like, why do you want to tell her that? Like, she got what? the Oscar nomination like ninety five percent. Like, Rotten Tomatoes. It was because I liked the movie. I see, but you could just write her like a letter. Wait, what, you know? what about everything you've been through? Yeah, that's what I said. I probably should write to Vince Gilligan and Greta Gerwig like fan a letter. I see. Just telling yeah, them you like. Yeah, fan letter, them. but I guess. Mm. Yeah, but I'm worried if I write them a letter, I'll probably need to write a letter to every other show on TV so they don't get jealous and know I'm picking favorites. <laughs> the creator you of know? Friends. So, like, I you, just... Why didn't I get a letter? It's like, I'm sorry, bro. You know, he, he has problems. Okay, we're looking this up. Who created Friends? Fuck it. Okay. It was Rob Schneider. No, okay. That's, that's, uh, let me look it up. Uh... Who created Friends? David Crane. There we go. That's, and that's him. Marta that's... Kaufman. That's, that's David Crane and Marta Kaufman. All right, David go. David Crane and Marta Kaufman. We apologize for not knowing your names, but we know them now. And uh, but I I I, I want to say something that's interesting. You look up who created Friends and Google. The first big thing that comes up is David Crane, just that in big bold text. And then you look down to the article and it says like Friends is an American television sitcom created by David Crane and Marta Kaufman. And I guess Google just felt like yeah, we can just put down one of their names. It's fine. Yeah. I'm sure they're fine with sharing an entity. 
Man, are you are you trying to like create a lawsuit or something for that? Like David, like you know, or, or Marta. Sorry, it's like Marta. You know, you should look into that. Like Marta when Kaufman, I, yeah. yeah, when I type in like who created Friends, you're you're second on. You're like the Buzz Aldrin of the situation, man. You wanna you know move up the? No, man, I I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to. Um, yeah. I'm just um, I'm just looking for clients so I can like sue people. So I'd be like, hey, you know, uh, I can be your lawyer. I, I haven't passed the bar. I've never gone to law school. In fact, I've only ever gone to film school. But in going to film school, I saw a few good men at least once. So I think I'm. I think I know what I'm doing. I think this is a mistake. <laughs> I think that's your catchphrase. I think it's becoming my catchphrase. I'm sorry, man. You can't handle the truth. I, I had because to we keep <laughs> making mistakes. As, man, again, this is we're sharing too much here, you know. Like, it's careful, careful how um, far we go. Can, um, can yes, yes. Can we address the fact that I watch Friends and then I get into this moral tailspin where I'm like, is is this fine to watch this? Is it okay to just because I I also found like the video I was talking about. It's called Why All Movies from 1999 Are the Same. It's by Now You See It. Ah. Basically, talks about how in the 90s. Things were kind of good for America economically. There was a lot of employment. And so a lot of films are made about you're feeling bored and stuff. Meanwhile, uh, and this is specifically for white people in the 90s. Mm. Meanwhile, uh, films about gay people in the 90s or black people in the 90s are anything but, oh, life is too comfortable. They are still have so many struggles. But these films are, uh, uh, the video will be down in the description down below. It's a great video, and he's a great yeah. person, I think. I mean, he's a great creator. I hope he's a great person. Um, mm. But then you, and I get a moral tailspin about Friends, and you're watching these dark films about decapitation of a child, and and you're just like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. This makes me feel better during the quarantine. I start feeling guilty when, for a brief moment, I don't feel guilty or bad or stressed out. And you get to watch all these super dark films, and you're just like, this is fine. Smi- this is great. Smiling like a little like a little halo shows up over my head. Like, oh, follow this pathway. Like, for it ooh, is yay. Jo- like pure joy in an image. Hannibal you know? Lecter. <laughs> yay. <laughs> oh, man. Hey doctor. So um, I I suppose um, I, you have a point there. Yeah. I the thing is though, again I am a horror movie fanatic. Like I grew up with it. So it's like for me, yeah. it's like a it's like when you see people owning like like alligators as pets. You know, it's like the fuck is that? Like why why are you why? But at the same time, it's like wait a minute, maybe you were conditioned to kind of appreciate that. So you you do that. You know, do it. Um, so likewise, I think. Just a quick note, please, please don't have wild animals as pets. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't advise it. Hey, Florida, if you're listening, just don't do it. Don't do it. I know they show up in your toilets and they the show up. The entire state of Florida. Like, careful, hey. careful, guys. You know, careful. Um, be cool, guys. Be cool. Yeah, they are cool. Yeah. They are cool. Just be cooler about the an- the animals you keep in your home. Um, see, I work. For, I work yeah. for a, a zoo. No, okay. Uh, so the the conditioning I had makes me a pre- like if I watch the Babadook and it's horrifically depressing and scary. Yeah. And I'm still. I'm still kind of like well, you know. But it's like just so cool, you know. <laughs> it's like it, it it make and you know this. What I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is I have sociopathic tendencies, and you know they come out. So, okay, no, I I I'm not trying to say that, but uh, yeah. I mean, those are the films I'm watching. I mean, we've talked about this before, where like I grew up on Disney films and stuff, and you grew up grew up on horror films. Yeah. <laughs> like the same age, you were watching horror films when I was watching Disney, and you haven't seen many Disney films. No. And I, in turn, I've, I've seen quite a few monster movies. I, I love monster movies, mm. but I haven't seen a lot of horror films. Right, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I differentiate monster movies and horror films because, like, you can tell yeah. a Dracula story, a werewolf story, a zombie story, and it not necessarily be horror. Well, I mean, yeah, the big giveaway is, like, if Matthew Broderick is in the film, then it's it's definitely a monster film. <laughs> so, um, I agree, I agree. Yeah, exactly. So, but, you know, the thing is, you made me watch a bunch of Disney films, um, which was great. You know, so I, I got a bit of a crash course uh, into some, some of those and found a new... We got into the introductions. Yeah, yeah. Like, a good, good appreciation to the essential stuff, you know, like, I, I liked most of it. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't really get to show you too many horror movies, though. Partly because they're horror movies, and I don't think they fly well for like a hey man, don't want to come over and hang out, sure bro, let's watch Hereditary with a couple beers. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, 
it, it, it's, a, it's a, just I'm crying in the corner. Like, why is this happening? Why is the mom doing that? And, it's like, and you're just like, oh my gosh, dude, this is so much fun. Can't take take a look. And I'm like, oh my god, free. Why did you said this would be fun? It's like you said that we were gonna have a sleepover and eat pizza and popcorn. I hate this. It's like I hate this pizza and popcorn. It's poison. It's like halfway through the film. It's like, hey man, do you want another slice of pizza? And you're like, get out of my house, you fool. <laughs> Leave my residence. I invite you here, and you do this. <laughs> and I'm like on the bus home, like, oh, that really hurt him. You know, I should, I should probably show him something else. Like, <laughs> he's like, we, you should probably, you should pro-. like. Meanwhile, I'm in bed with the window that's like right on the other side, so I'm facing the window when I'm in bed. I'm just like, oh my god, no, no, like just please don't imagine a face at the window tonight. Oh God! Oh yeah, but you—the minute you say I don't want to do, the minute you say please don't imagine that, your brain imagines that. That's annoying, you know. It's like the movie, yeah. there's like that movie in. But he was already on the way. <laughs> it, it, you're, you were figuring out the words by the time you were saying the words. Your brain was already there, and you knew it yeah. was happening. It was happening yeah, I'm regardless cu- I'm curious, whether what you wanted. I'm or curious not. what you see, cause like okay, I had that experience with Hereditary. Like when I saw it, I genuinely looked at my window for ten minutes, like please, please, kid, don't. Like even if a gush of wind flew by, I'd piss myself. So I was like, just do nothing, life. World, take just pause so I can sleep. Um, but like, I started imagining like a face, cause I couldn't help myself. But, like, it was, like, just the face of, like, an old woman, like, an old kind of hundred, hundred-year-old lady, mm-hmm. you know, like, with, like, her hair mm-hmm. is kind of balding, like, just that face in the dark, you know, and it's, like, I went to sleep, and I was just, like, please don't dream about this, and because I have a thing where if I say I don't want to dream about it, then I actually don't dream about it, so, luckily, I was okay, able nice. to, I was able to overcome that, um, but, yeah, I mean, then again, I like that, like, I'm maybe in a masochistic sense, I like not being able to sleep after a horror film and being terrified and just, like, it just to me speaks to the power of what films can do and so basically yeah. uh, trying to link this back to what I'm doing right now it sticks with you exactly but I right now feel like with me because I'm kind of realizing something and this is kind of a personal uh, uh, this journey of mine uh, in that my early content like my, my short films <clears throat> just to link this to filmmaking um, they came from a very personal place like I think my early short films as much as they were like resume building like hey here's my content here's what I can do even though you always evolve with that and what I can do now is far more than what I could do then still with what I what I made it was there was always like a therapeutic aspect to it and so and because there was a therapeutic aspect to my early <clears throat> my early work they kind of had a, a slightly darker sensibility it was it was like a spillage of neg- negativity because everyone experiences negativity right so my early work was like that and i think a mistake i was making with my free my feature work was it wasn't like a writing problem it was more like using that same con like not realizing that i personally had just evolved so much since when i made a lot of my old short films and by old i mean even as la- close as last to last year or last year like i i have evolved so i when i started to write this movie and give it that same like darker treatment very kind of grimy and and brooding it just wasn't speaking to me personally like i just felt like i'm beyond this like i don't need to do that anymore um, yeah. And it kind of interestingly enough, because as a person, I'm anything but horrifying. Unless you see me up close, then probably. Yeah. But I'm, <laughs> I'm not um, somebody who who has a, a you know like that kind of mean streak of like I want I know like like the kind of cynicism that some of my work has. So I came to acknowledge that a little bit recently, and in the wake of what I've seen, what Jordan Peele's been doing with horror, you know, with Get Out and Us. I love both those films. I think I like Us even more. No, I, think, I think Get Out has a slight edge. But Dude, same, I love, same. Yeah, because I can rewatch Us more than Get Out. Like, Us has so much subtext. Yeah. So, um, like, yeah. What, what I really love about Us is you watch Get Out, you're like, okay, I understand the message. Totally cool. And it's a great movie. Fantastic movie. And this is the thing which I think maybe some people are turned off by, but I watch Us and I can have a longer conversation. We debate, we talk about, like, what do you think this means? Was it about something about like the imagery he put in to like show like how Native Americans had their land stolen from them, how this is stolen goods. Is it to show that no one is inherently good or evil? But I mean like uh, yeah, it, it depends on the situation. Anyone can become that bad or is it is it because like, oh, we say like, oh, this is America yeah. and the land of free, but actually we've been stealing things from uh, minorities for so long. 
I, you could talk about it for so long, I know. and that's why it's amazing. Funny, funny story. I, I, when it ended, like I was on a Reddit thread for I think two and a half hours, just looking at different interpretations. It's so perfect. To, to that's yeah. just so satisfying, bro. Like I love that about movies. You know, it's like, well, what, what did that actually mean? And you're right. And so yeah, they're both great. And what you just said, bearing that in mind, right? Um, my new horror movie, which is a feature, is actually a horror comedy, and it's actually very overtly a mm -hmm. comedy. Um, you like as because I know Toby, you've seen my old work and stuff, so I think even you might be quite surprised by how much humor is in this script. Like it really is, I think, <laughs> actually more of a comedy to be honest, because it's kind of about a nanny and uh, I talked about this very briefly on our last episode. It's about a nanny, an Indian nanny yeah. in a British kind of aristocratic home with like a young boy, or well, like young, like a twelve year old kid, mm -hmm. and. Those interactions yeah. that those two are gonna have can't help but be a little funny, you know. Like automatically, the dynamic there is a little humorous. And in our script, like it's like I'm walking on because I'm co-writing with someone. Or I'm doing the screenplay now, and I conceptualize the story with a wonderful storyteller. Hopefully, I'll get her to come on the writing process too. But we've been like, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, dude, it'd be so good. And so we've been on this fine line of like, of like figuring out the tonal consistencies from scene to scene, you know, of like, hey, um. We can this they, we can joke here, but knowing that three scenes on, we're gonna see a really scary image, and we need to just segue very smoothly. So for me, like I've been pretty religiously watching scenes from Us and Get Out, especially Us, just to see like how, cause Us to me is funnier than Get Out. You know, Us has a lot more like like just the sprinkling of humor is stronger to me in that film, and so I just watch yeah. like how I I love Get Out and it's great and it has oh sorry uh I was gonna say that I love Get Out. And I think there's some moments with the TSA guy which are very funny, but I never once thought it was a comedy or anything. It was, but uh, us, I definitely felt a lot more of those comedic beats. Exactly, yeah. exactly. They stand out more. I mean, yeah, and, and so that was a great kind of uh, was a great kind of foundation for this story that I'm working on. And actually, I encourage people to like do that. Like, don't be don't be afraid to just watch movies you love that influence you and use them as like as like a guide for your even your structure like even like if the first draft mm -hmm. of your script is basically a rip off <laughs> you know of whatever you were like it's your first draft yeah. i think i was my sphere uh, as a writer sometimes is i know i'm becoming formulaic but then i want to stop writing and get blocked because i hit put myself in a corner for being formulaic um in or my early drafts and then my my biggest struggle is to break through that and just slog it out and write a pretty formulaic first draft and then really try to subvert because the problem mm -hmm. with me is I, I can't seem to accept that there's a future beyond draft one which again per, having a co-writer has mm -hmm. been really grounding that way because they've been like no listen you, you can you know I'm here right? it's like we got time and we're, we're not just going to stop at draft one so really been yeah. super cathartic super enjoyable and just writing horror man the, the, when you're writing like interior mansion night like Thomas walks into a living room sees a creepy face on a window reflection like that stuff just I love that you know like I love putting that in scene <laughs> description like oh like in caps we see a face oh man I'm done you know it's um so that's been a, it's been a great experience man that that's been quarantine for me the best part of it is just now having this focus on this script on the script that's amazing that really is amazing Yes, sir. Like, it, it is good when you have that time where you can work on things. I think it was, it was, we, no, it was before quarantine when we finished the script we wrote together. And, uh, right, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you left. And, uh, but in quarantine, I have used the time to crew up and, uh, oh no, that was before quarantine. What have I done during quarantine? Friends. Oh, right, yeah, I did a bunch of dumb, <laughs> <laughs> I watched Friends and made a bunch of very dumb sketches on Instagram. You wrote a, you wrote a, and, you wrote a uh, dissertation, you wrote anymore. a dissertation on Friends and, and, and you, uh, yes, yes, and, you know, your Instagram stuff is really funny, I love your Instagram stuff, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, actually what I started doing on, uh, Letterboxd? Yes? I'm gonna go through, uh, and ev write every single review as, uh, Okay, let's take this review from Reservoir Dogs. Okay. You Here's know, what I wrote for it. Tell me. It was, it says, turns out the real stolen heist diamonds were the friends we made along the way. And then uh, yeah, for yeah. Laura from 1944, I wrote, turns out the real Laura was the friends we made along the way. 
Yeah. And I'm just gonna do that for every, every single movie. movie I see now. Oh, you troll you! I've been see, I've been seeing that for a bunch of stuff at that comment. Like I think that there was one about the Snyder. What? <laughs> yeah, man, there was one about the Snyder cut somewhere where it was like I think the real Snyder cut is the friends we made along the way, and I was like, huh, that's an interesting. No, comment. ah, man. Oh, okay. Well. Well, it is a very common line, and that's why you make fun of it. But, I mean, I want to do that with every single film I review. From <laughs> now on, my letterbox is just going to be that, or the friends we made along the way. Mm. And the joke will get old very soon, but I'll keep doing it. <laughs> what do you forever. get when you take a mentally ill loner in a society that abandons him? <laughs> in a society, <laughs> you get what you fucking deserve. <laughs> and you tell that same joke, like, <laughs> It's like they look at his past like... like it turns out the real... Uh, <laughs> the real society is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I'm actually going to write that right now for per Joker. Perfect. That's actually perfect. And take that one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it turns out the real society was the friends we made along the way. Oh, jeez. Ooh, ooh, you know what we should do, actually? Run through... like just We'll do some like speed round... What's it called? Rapid fire rounds? Yeah. Um... So yeah, I, I wonder, like, you list off some of, like, the last maybe five or six letterbox reviews you did. And I actually have a, a, a sure. list here, because I actually took inspiration from you, but with, like, like barely the amount of organization you did for yours. But I made a list of films that I've been seeing since when I was in France, like, in May of, of, of 2019. I've been doing it. So I'll just give you some random, some random films that I think you may have seen, and we'll just, like, just give me, like, quick, like, thoughts on. You could be curious to see what, what we have to say about them. Sure. Tell me your letterbox. Uh, I recently saw rewatched Reservoir Dogs with my brother. It was his first time watching it, and uh, I just came in and joined him in that. Yeah. And uh, so I had already known the ending of Reservoir Dogs, like not the ending, but I knew who the rat was. And uh, there were no rats in Reservoir Dogs. That... I think you're mentioning Ratatouille, my friend. That's a wrong film. Oh, oh. yes, right. Sorry, I rewatched Ratatouille, and I was like, "Oh, I know who the rat is." And then it was like, "But then everyone <laughs> was kind said, of no. like, yeah, he's the you, you he's said, the main character." You should have said, "You should have said, I watched Ratatouille, and I know who the cop was." That would have been funny. It's like, like Ratatouille. Like, imagine if it ends with Remy, like, "I'm a fucking cop." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, it like, like shoots him no, no. <laughs> it like pushes in on like Linguini's face and then he gunshot cuts to black you hear a bunch like, no. police like put, the, put the gun down put the gun down put it down P Pixar was never oh. the same <laughs> Okay. Like the original Brad Bird cut, it's that, and they're like, "No, you can't do that." <laughs> no, bro, this is you're talking about the Snyder cut of Ratatouille right here, like darker, grittier. Oh my god! <laughs> Re okay. Release the Ratatouille cut, which ends the same way as Res <laughs> Reservoir Dogs. We know it exists. Uh, do it. Just do it. Internet. <laughs> Continue. Uh, <laughs> what I wanted to say was, um, so I saw Reservoir Dogs, and but he didn't know the twist or anything. And it was amazing to hear him. And at one point, he just says, dude, this is insane. Yeah. And then he sees, he sees who the cop is. And he's like, what? And it's like such a big deal to him. I'm, I'm not going to spoil it here. Mm. But like, it's, it's so, he, he was so impressed. And he's like, what? And then he sees the story unfurl. And he's like, this is amazing. And he says, I love the dialogue. I love the way yeah. they're doing everything. The ear cutting scene. It's like, yeah. And, uh. No, it was really cool because I already knew the twist, and so I was kind of like, "Yeah, it's fun and whatever." But I didn't realize you have that reaction. So yeah. it's kind of I kind of take for granted that there's some films which are better not to know the twist for. Well, you don't say. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think that's what they all want. You know, like don't don't know the twist. <laughs> like imagine watching The Sixth Sense, knowing what happens. It's like, oh, like I, I would like yeah. really ruin my day, bro. Turns out he um, was a rat all along. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, again, Bruce, with, I'm a fucking cop. Just every film ends that way. No, no, this is Haley <laughs> Joel Osment is holding a bloody Bruce Willis. He's like, ah. Haley <laughs> <laughs> Joel Osment, sh sh gunshot. It cuts to black. <laughs> it's, it's like, but he's already a ghost. It doesn't matter. Forget the logic. We need the gunshot. Just put it. In. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> listen, oh listen, God. listen, listen. This was meant to be a rapid fire thing, so I want to like uh, quickly. I'll say I really okay. like. I, uh, I love. I love Reservoir Dogs too. Real quick. Um, 
Tarantino cannot yeah. act. Ten- Tarantino can't act, but Harvey Keitel can, so it works out. Um, uh, Tim Roth is great. I mean, um, I'm pretty. I'm I I loved the I'm scene with fan- where they talk about Fantastic Four. What a dork. Um, and I like the. Yeah, he, and they even have the Silver Surfer poster, so it works. He, he's. A, I think he's a huge fan of Silver Surfer. I don't. I don't remember, but yeah, exactly. He he honors canon that way. Um, so yeah, I I love. Uh, it's like I'm talk like Russell Moore talks is in the MCU. No, I really liked uh, that film. So in my opinion. Please. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's yeah. What's next? Um, I also. S- I also saw Anatomy of a Murder, which oh. was uh, which was interesting because I like the movie, mm. but because I like to see these law cases and everything, but there were some things which felt like they were hitting Hollywood beats right. that weren't properly taken care of. And it's a very long film, and a lot's going on. It's like two and a half hours, yeah. and I enjoyed the movie. I was glad I saw it. But there's some moments where I'm like, you know, this sticks out to me. Like, it, it jumps out to me. And I know why, because it doesn't seem like it's right. Mm. And it, I'm not going to say that impacts it or hurts it. You just go through exp- the experience, and it's a fun movie. It's great. I mean, well. It's also, let's preface by saying, as, for those who as don't fun know, as a, it's pretty ancient for those of you who don't know. Like, Anatomy of yeah. a Murder. Is, is, if you mention, like, it's too Hollywood, like, it literally was, like, when they invented Hollywood, you know, okay, not that far back, but it, it's a yeah, pretty, it's a pretty old film. <laughs> I had the, I basically had the same reaction when I'd first seen uh, uh, Strange Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's it, right? Close uh, Encounters. Of the Third Close kind. Encounters. Ah, I yeah. always miss that. Right. So. Uh, <laughs> strange, anyways, strange Encounters, encounters is the porno version, bro. Don't talk about that one. Wait, what? Oh boy. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm joking. Or who? Or am I? I don't know. Maybe it, it exists now that I said it. Continue. Don't Google that. Don't Google that. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Close Encounters of the Cur- Third Kind, I had the same reaction because there were points in that movie which felt like they were put in because they knew that movies work better when they have that rather than it being the truth, it being the truth of their characters or what was necessary. Yeah. I, mean, I agree. They, uh, I agree completely, by the way. You, particularly I totally with, agree. Yeah, especially that kiss in Close Encounters. Like, yeah. where did that come? You have a wife and family. Okay, I get the whole Dude. you're leaving for space thing. You've met this woman three times. Dude, forget the kiss. The fact that sure. I mean, he leaves to another dimension and leaves his, like, wife and yeah. dog. And you know, what does he do? He makes a mashed potato mountain, which I guess is his version of parenting. And then he leaves uh, to this remote site where Francois Truffaut is, like, guiding people. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, dude... You have a wife and a, and a daughter, like, I'm sorry, or was it a son? You like go back, but then again, you can, he had a few kids. He, I think he had multiple he, he kids. He had plentiful children, is what I'm saying. And <laughs> thanks for that. He had so and many kids. So many he had, kids. Actually, in the film, there's so ma- there's like a room where there's like more kids. There's yeah. like ten more kids inside the other room. You just <laughs> don't see them in the film. He just looks at the camera like more reasons to hate me, I suppose. And then the movie continues. No, but so like literally, like it's it's so frustrating because I feel like Spielberg, who had daddy issues, by the way. Um, um, probably was venting and like just making this movie. It wasn't he, that Spielberg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Spielberg wrote. It's one of the few films Steven Spielberg had a writing credit on. In fact, he was the sole writer of that mm-hmm. film, I believe. So it's very much him just being like, you know, this is about my dad who wasn't there for me, and so you write this film and he, and he goes away and goes to space. My dad went to space and he came back. You know, and and I feel like that was. I, I want to apologize to Mr. Spielberg. I, I really, I love you, man. I'm so, I don't know where that came from. I think you should apologize to anyone who's ever had a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, people of Earth. I didn't mean. <laughs> Gunshot. No, okay. Um, I, 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 I think, listen, I think it's a really um, flawed film. And I think Spielberg is a genius, but I, that film for me just, I feel. I don't feel good watching it. Like what you said about Friends, I re- reiterate yeah. to <laughs> Close Encounters of the Third Kind. First time in film that's ever happened before where those two have met. But um, really, I, I, what is the take? What is the takeaway of Close Encounters? What is the takeaway? It's like you should. Well, lady, you you did the bad thing by leaving your husband, who had torn up the entire house and said aliens are real, and that they <laughs> that they wanted him to build a mountain out of mashed potatoes. Right. Yes. Yeah. He, he was right. You should have listened to him. That was In the, fact, that you, was the you purpose. You didn't of, listen hard enough. Yeah. And that's yeah. your fault. That's the purpose. Like we are here to teach you new ways to make mashed potato recipes. And it's like, are you hearing this? And Trevor was like, Yes, I hear it. Let's hear it more. And it's like, we must make you have mountains of it for it to be. I don't know. 
I don't know I'm going I'm sorry I'm really sorry but like I apologize for everything uh, but the, again Mr. Spielberg really you're a hero of mine don't take me like uh, don't don't I'm not telling you how much I love Saving Private Ryan but like that movie changed my life anyway th- th- this to me yeah was the problem of Close Encounters it just felt kind of weirdly distant to me and I understand it's a beloved film it, it's kind of like we may get flack mm-hmm. for this if someone looks in the archives of human history and discovers this episode they'll be like oh that guy Farid from 3,000 years ago, we're going to hate him now because he didn't like that film. I I do love Spielberg and I do see why people love it. Just not my thing. Anyway, Toby, you want to move on to the next one on the list, bro? I mean, or what? I, I want to say this real quick. Okay, le- let me pitch this short uh, sequel to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It's been like 30 years later and a spaceship com- comes back. And they're like, oh my gosh, what, what's going on? And they're really excited. So... They go out, and the guy comes out, like the main guy. I don't know his name. He comes out of the spaceship, and he's got this big container. And they're like, what, what is this? What have you brought? And he, and he has tears coming, streaming down his face. <laughs> and he just yells out, their planet is made out of mashed potatoes. All they have is mashed potatoes. I spent 30 years there only eating mashed potatoes. They gave me all their knowledge and information, and it was just mashed potatoes. <laughs> Somebody checked What's it. in the box? It's just more mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's like, like, a, like, a black... it's like, I've wasted 30 years of my life. It's like in Infinity War, like, somebody get this man a cholesterol test, you know? <laughs> check. And it's like through the roof. It's just like, I've wasted so many years. It's like, like it's come to a point where like he is he hallucinates in his home and he just sees everybody as a mashed potato piece and it's like, ah, oh. he's like he can't, I can't integrate with humanity anymore. All I see are mashed potato people. Um, he, he goes he goes to a plant and he starts nibbling on it. He's like, sir, sir, what are you doing? It's like, sorry, I I I thought that was something else, sir. They they're not mashed potatoes. I know, I know. It feels, it I feels, know. Like, it feels like the like a combination of the happening and like a really bad mashed potatoes infomercial. I don't know where we're going with this. Um, so so okay. Um, what's the next film on your on your uh, letterbox, Toby? Please tell us, tell us quickly. No, we're gonna keep going back to Planet Mashed Potatoes no, forever. No, please. You um, know what? That, that movie ends. You um, know how that movie ends? He's holding a mashed potato piece, and it's like the mashed potato piece is like. I'm a fucking cop and he shoots <laughs> cut shot <laughs> that's how it ends okay be very clear about that okay that's exactly how it ends <laughs> we, 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 we shouldn't be allowed okay. to watch movies bro we no, this was a mistake. It was, this was a mistake. This was a huge mistake. Okay. What is the next um, thing? Yeah, anyways, anatomy... Anyways, anatomy of murder. Um, <laughs> its biggest issue is it doesn't have enough mashed potatoes. Okay. Hey, have you seen The Irishman? I don't know, man. I'm trying to segue it. <laughs> Does it have mashed potatoes in it? I don't know, but they have Italian bread and wine. Maybe that counts. Um, oh. Get that shit out of my face. <laughs> Only mashed potatoes. I'm sorry, man. I'm so- I should know better. Um, okay. What else have I seen? I watched Toy Story because they had a character called Mr. Potato Head. Total <laughs> tease. He's never turned into mash at any point in the four movies. Don't show that to your kids. It's Ridiculous. all it's a lie. Don't show it to your kids. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I... I saw, um, so I'm going to run down through some films on my list, and uh, you tell me what you think. Um, well, actually, before, I need to Serious get... Serious time. We're professionals. Okay. We're professionals. So, yeah, that that's a, okay, how do we, so I guess I'll tell you some of the films I, I've been seeing, uh, and you give me your, again, this was, again, framed as a rapid fire, bro, so let's try to, like, rapid fire this rapid fire thing, um, if we can. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, okay, okay, okay. Let's let's do this. So, <clears throat> let's see. What's a movie Toby's seen that I could re- that I know he's seen that we can discuss? Discuss. Okay, S- Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, yeah. Everyone's favorite. What a waste! What a waste! Exactly. Oh man, you know, um, we should have Chris on the show because uh, I I always try to ask yeah. him like, what does he think about the latest Star Wars? But he's always really kind of vague about it he's always kind of avoiding the question never really saying like what he thinks about it well that's because he made it that's because i he, think that'd he, be well that's because he made it toby and if you made that film you don't want to talk about it 
So, um, I Chris understand. did not make that. Be yes. nice to Chris. Chris, why did you why did you do that to, to Ray? Like seriously, you could have done no. so many other things. And Palpatine, are you kidding me, Chris? What's wrong with you, Chris? Okay. Can I ask a question? Why is it when Ray dies, she doesn't force Ghost away, but then Kylo every Kylo dies and he force Ghosts away? Because Ray really had to pee. So when you have to, you have to really have to pee. You don't force Ghosts does away. Does the force you... not take you if your bl- <laughs> does the force not take you if your bladder is still full? Well, that's why before you have a lightsaber duel, you should always use the bathroom. Uh, make sure you're ready. Otherwise, okay. you won't. Again, it's yeah. it's a glitch in the Matrix. Or oh, sorry, the Force. Wrong mythology. And it gets you yeah. to to you know, um, do what I read all the books. Like I I know where I'm coming from here. Um. So yeah, Ray Ray had to okay. Ray had Ray had to pee. Kylo didn't have to pee, and because Kylo didn't have to pee, he he was sent to be one with the Force. Um, which is interesting because this is a guy who's yeah. killed thousands of people and is basically been a bad guy most yeah. of his life. It's like, ah, oh, come here, Bucko. We'll give you a pass. Welcome to Star Wars heaven. Step right up. Take a take a tequila well, and celebrate. <laughs> so did Darth Vader, and he. He also killed a bunch of children, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess the Force is kind of like, hey, it's only if... Hey, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in your last five minutes of screen time, it's fine. <laughs> Get right in, man. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. That's clearly how it works. Oh, my God. That's, see, you just reminded me of episode three, which is basically... I want to discuss this with you separately, but now they, we're seeing like a revival of movies as like memes you know like a meme movie basically because every scene in it is and that kind of makes the film endearing it's still you mm-hmm. can't shake the fact that the movie's probably really bad but because scenes are now used as memes it's like you watch it with like a smile you know for example um episode three yeah. has the most it's the most memed movie in the world because palpatine every line that guy says like there's a great meme right now where it's like um the sound recordist like like in movie set memes the sound recordist when he's got asked to get up and just do a small task not sound related and it has like a meme of palpatine saying this threat on my life has leave, left me scarred and deformed and it, it's like you know what i'm saying stuff like stuff like this so like, yeah oh you should you should talk to doran about that he quotes it all the time me personally never seen the prequels i see i see yeah, that, yeah it's, that's i stay stick with friends bro that don't don't go to prequel town but uh prequel town that's not a place to, <laughs> to, prequel <laughs> town. it's like george lucas it doesn't is, make sense why why is she why is she into anakin he's so weird and creepy forget it, jack it's prequel town <laughs> oh god that also implies like incestuous shit, and uh, let's not go there. Um, so basically, let's not. There's a scene where Unless. Uh, no, 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 really, that's not. Like, there's <laughs> there's a scene where a kid uh, where he kills the kids. I don't know if you've seen it, but it has the best acting in cinema, man. Like even Daniel Day was like, he watched that scene to prepare for there will be blood. Is that good? It's a kid looks up at, at at Anakin who's got like a super crazy I'm gonna kill you look, and this is a five year old kid. Right? Can you imagine a grown man just looking at a kid, like staring him down, like I'm about to end you, just standing there. This kid walks up with like a dazed expression. Master, that, that Master, sounds terrifying. But, but dude, uh, it kind of is. But in the movie, the kid walks out and he's like, "Master Skywalker, there's too many of them. What are we going to do?" And then he, and you hear it, ching, lightsaber turns on and it just cuts away. And every time I watch that scene, you talk about films where you shouldn't be having fun with that, but that scene just makes me laugh so hard, man. Every time, it just it feels like an episode of Barney the Dinosaur that they just didn't air. You know, it's like, oh, that we went a bit too far in that. One. Like it's so funny, prequels avoid them uh where were we going with this um okay um another film from my thing mashed potatoes i think no please no please please that's a dangerous place to go um oh here's one we've both seen that we have different opinions on yes yesterday by danny boyle i found it the most inoffensive bland thing whatever and here's the thing (laughs) Yeah, yeah i understand why you would get mad at stuff because this was actually a movie i was so in- ready for because i was like oh my gosh th- this idea is awesome a world without the beatles yeah and then you're stealing the- what are they going to play with this oh my gosh there's so much you can do with this this is such a fantastic story and concept and then we got something which some of the frames and shots are really nice and there's uh one or two really nice scenes and musically mm. i like it yeah well of but course how could it be bad that the way the movie yeah. is the movie is bland and mm. boring and comes and goes and i'm just like huh and i'm like wow that's a that was a letdown but i was like eh, well it's not bad or anything it's oh, it's horrible and so, your opinion is yeah it's like that it's, it's the worst thing it's the worst thing since canned <laughs> canned bread um i think this like look 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 wait it's worst thing since once 
I, th- I think I said canned bread, which I don't think is anything that exists, but... Uh, yeah, that sounds terrible. I think if it I th- does, someone should make it just for it to be the worst thing ever. I think I meant to say canned beans or something, which isn't even that bad, so I apologize. Um, to Canned, canned beans can- are amazing. They're I great. had them yesterday. Yeah, and if you're having a, a zombie apocalypse or Tales something... Tales Late Film Podcast, brought to you by Killed... <laughs> That's right, and mashed potatoes. I want apocalypse apparently. just to happen just so... <laughs> I want a zombie apocalypse app just so I can have my mashed potatoes and beans in peace and no one can judge me. They'll be like, you know, you're eating a lot of those beans. I'm like, well, it's an apocalypse, so uh, yeah. piss off. You just, like, take all the cartons that everybody needs to survive, like, more for me. And you just, like, starve everybody else in the room. Like, just release a zombie in the, in, the, in the impound. Be like, oops, oh no, more beans for me. It's like, I guess you guys have to go deal with that zombie while I take these delicious beans. You just, take the, you just go off into a room somewhere. Just, I just have this big old band, bag of beans over my shoulder like, ha ha ha, I stole all of their beans. Yeah. I did it. And, and no like, one saw it coming. And then there's like like a doctor we've discovered a vaccine for for the zombie apocalypse. You then it's in this vial, you take that vial and you just throw it on the ground. Well now we can't we're gonna ha- we're not gonna stop my quest to eat all the beans. <laughs> just run away. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. Can can I say right here that the fact that we've switched over to talking about canned beans more passionately than we have about the movie yesterday yeah. should show you kind of how bland and boring it there actually is. There we go. Is. But here's the thing, man. It's offensive because, see, I was offended by it. And in a time like 2020, you know how that, that really, you know, how important that is. Like, Danny Boyle, man, that guy's a, I don't know. I mean, I keep saying this because I, I talk about these, like, people I love, um, who I grew up with and I, I want to meet one day, so I don't want to, you know, rag on their work too much. Danny Boyle is one of my favorite directors, and I, and I, you know, Train Spotting, I love. Um, there's a movie he made called Millions, which super underrated. And then there's of course Slum Dog, and 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 uh, which I have mixed feelings on. But 28 Days Later, <clears throat> I really like Danny Boyle. Richard Curtis, who wrote uh, Notting Hill, uh, I believe Four Weddings in a no, Four Weddings in a yeah, I think Four Weddings and a Funeral. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, Love Actually, which Sounds is about right. Love yeah. Actually, which is a guilty pleasure um, of mine. I know it's kind of a dumb film, but I really mm-hmm. enjoy it. Um, it's the kind of film you just like. My mom loves it, and so I have good memories of that. Um, and even like his newer stuff, like About Time, I didn't mind About Time. So I, I was going into it like, wow, you have a supremely gifted. I need to see it. I need to see it. It's been on my list for it, forever. It's <laughs> it's about time, huh, Toby? So it's it's uh, put So it's like so much talent behind the camera. The cast is awesome, you know. Kate McKinnon is awesome when she's, you know, given good material, but apparently not here because she was the worst part of the movie. Um, and so, to me, it was just like a depressing watch because I knew that, that there was so much more potential given the talent at hand, right? Um, mm-hmm. So that really pissed me off. And then yeah. on top of that, you got the Beatles. You have the music. And it's the Beatles. Yeah, it's the be- Dude, I mean, how could you mess that? It's, it's like, um, I can't think of, what's another example of like, a film which has so much talent going for it and it just didn't like how could you make that mistake like it, it's it's like that you know um, um th- i mean there's go- i mean i guess star wars the rise of skywalker i mean if you want to go back because that's a good example i guess so yeah. yeah i mean i love jj's most of his films to yeah. be honest i love super eight so it's like yeah what did you do um <clears throat> and so yeah that's that's a big one for me Okay, um, another film you may have seen. Uh, ooh, Okja by Bong. We'll do one more of these and then we'll talk about something else. But like Okja yeah. by Bong Joon Ho. What do you sure. think? Of, what do you think of Okja? Because I know you had mixed feelings on Okja. I'm gonna be honest. I had fun with moments of it, but uh, Okja came and went for me. Like uh, I enjoyed it. I liked the. I liked Okja himself. Uh, I liked. Um, is Okja a boy or a girl? I think it was a. I thought it was a boy. I think it was a girl. I think it was a girl. Maybe it was no, a girl. No, it was a girl, right, it because it was in the... No, 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 it was a girl because when Jake don't, Gyllenhaal... Don't, yeah, don't say the scene. It's really, the, it's really dark. Don't say the yeah, scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, wow, yeah. yeah. No, Okja is a girl. Right, sorry. Anyways, uh, I really liked Okja. She was a yeah. really nice character. I really sympathized with her. I really I, I really liked the little girl. Tilda Swinton, I liked her acting and performances. Oh, yeah, man, of course. Of course. I of loved course. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal. Honestly, there, there, I don't think there's a bad performance in the film or something that to say like that, but I don't know. It just, it didn't really, it, I don't know. It, it didn't just, grab you. Maybe you it also, came and went and it maybe just. Maybe you also had like big expectations coming out of Parasite, man. You know, it's like. Maybe, poof. yeah. And maybe also, I was expecting a lot and mm-hmm. it's not a bad film at all. I, I want that to be clear. It's not a bad film. I just, 
if someone say like, oh, great films, and I'd be like, oh, Bong Joon Ho has done so many. Oh, Memories of a Murder. Are you kidding? Parasite. I still need to watch Mother and the Host. I know. I really want to. Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer is so amazing. And then Okja, it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's fine. Like, it came and went, and I was like, it's not bad or anything. It's, yeah. It's definitely better than yesterday. <laughs> but Well, yeah, that's not too I difficult. Know. It just, uh, it just didn't uh, do anything for me. I feel and you. I feel I, you. I, and I know it's very tempting to then say, like, oh, well, that then it's bad because there was so much potential or whatever. But, I mean, it, it wasn't even bad. It was just me personally, I didn't gel with it. And I, that's fine. Like, nothing it did was wrong. I actually liked a lot of it. Whew. All right, man. Since we are actually approaching the one hour, 23 minute mark, I was I was kind of hoping we could we could wrap in a few minutes time. Um because I have businesses to attend to. Let that sounds shady. I have to deal with fam stuff. You know that also sounds shady. Um, just my yeah. my. I have things to do. Everything I say is shady. Um, okay, huh? So I have a shovel that I need to bury in the backyard with another shovel. See that that's not shady at all. I, that's a perfectly valid. Like people aren't gonna suspect you of anything with that. Um, so like yeah, man. I I suppose um we well uh. I I wonder then like what's the next uh ooh, ooh okay here's something I want to tell you about I saw that movie Coach Carter recently I don't know if you've seen it Samuel Jackson Never yes seen it. No. yes how is it it's really weird to me and I need you to clarify this how important is high school basketball in America because I was watching this because we because look I'm from Malaysia bro I grew up there so high school basketball doesn't go mm-hmm. beyond the gymnasium in your high school like it's like oh there are yeah. gonna be tournaments but it's like cool in this movie bro it's like the NFL or or, or NBA sorry it's like it's like one of those you know it's like mm-hmm. the NBA like literally there's like um, Sam Jackson shows up to this to the school and he's like. You know, and also the movie's kind of weird because in between like training sessions, like every single line Sam Jackson has is some like pearl of wisdom. You know, like every line, it's like he's like a, like every scene he's playing the Yoda card. You know what I mean? Every scene, um, <laughs> which is now a thing that exists. <laughs> and the thing is, I don't know why. Like then they show like people like coming to this to this to the to the to the I don't know like the games and stuff and like there's like a packed crowd and there's like press like there's people on the news like and so whatever the school's name was now progresses to the next round and it's like dude it's high school basketball what it's not that why are you giving this so much coverage focus on other things like dude what is what are you doing and I just wondered then you know is that what it's like there <laughs> in t- in the same uh, also, in other news, in lesser news, there were three stabbings in town today. <laughs> it's like, it literally, dude, it's like... But back to basketball. It's like, it's like, yeah, Beverly High has now scored enough points to make it to the semifinals. Meanwhile, a tsunami has been reported near Houston. and Like, you know, it, it's like, it's like, what are you doing? And so, I don't know. I guess I'm just letting you know something that's been on my mind, man. It really bothers me. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, well with, on the high school question, it's, uh, it comes... There's some high schools which are football schools or basketball schools or right. baseball schools. And saying that, they take a lot of pride in this particular team because they win a lot. They make it to, uh, they make it to the Final Four. They make it to uh, – they win the entire, uh, the entire district. I don't know what they're called. But they, <laughs> they get far. They get far into the – playoffs or whatever <laughs> um and i'm sorry my high i'm school, sorry bro i'm sorry I'm, i made you out like you have to like like you have to look up sports terminology to answer this i'm so no sorry problem. <laughs> i i don't know sports but what i do know was uh one of the high schools i went to was a football high school and ah. uh and i played on the basketball team and you could tell why they loved the football team more than they loved us because the football team well, they, they got further. The basketball team, they, they didn't make it that far. And, uh, uh, okay. and I get that. So it could be that, like, that district is uh, particularly – basketball is very important to them. Yeah. So they're like, okay, this is very important to us. People care about basketball. And so that will make the news. Uh, if it was in a different district where maybe they cared about football more, maybe it wouldn't make the news. Um, also – there was probably a politician embezzling a lot of money right then, and it was making the it was going to make the papers. So it was like he bribed some like newspaper people to like go make like this foot 
this basketball game like the top news story for the week so no one knows this happened and yeah, so like because public because opinion clearly doesn't change. because clearly a high school basketball game is going to distract everyone from my evil plan <laughs> like that that's my if secret if you make it the front page and you're like oh my gosh this is amazing you read the front page and it's like oh my gosh that's fantastic and meanwhile there's this small article like yes he embezzled so much money and uh, he's been paying off people to settle uh sexual harassment lawsuits. Yeah. It was like, like, oh my gosh, the high school basketball team won. Yeah. They, they made a point. Yeah. Good job, guys. It's oh. Like, it's like he's alone, in some, a... he's alone in some fireplace. They will never look at page 67. Because you know, they've got like, the, the high school thing on page one. It's... Are you kidding me? Oh my God. But that is an interesting oh skit. Oh my gosh. There's, um, this, there, um, there's this movie. It's a Disney Channel movie with. Uh, right. Thanks for letting us know. I don't now know. Now I know it. Now I know it's probably gonna <laughs> be bad. Yeah, it's probably gonna suck already. It what, is what bad. It, it's bad. Is, yeah. Here's the thing. It's not a. It's a. It's about basketball, but it's not. It. It's a sports movie. <laughs> what does that? But it's about. What's that supposed to mean? It's. it's that here. makes it. That makes it sound Shakespearean, bro. It's about basketball, it but sounds, it's not. Oh, I, yeah. it's about. The team mascot. Oh my God! What's and the it called? The team called? mascot. They're the chickens. It's called Hatching Pete. And it is uh-huh. a hilariously bad film, but you can watch it and have such a fun time with it. Like, get drunk with friends and watch this movie. It's fantastic. Mm. And the basketball team is the worst basketball team ever. And oh. I'm going to spoil it for you. I don't care. They only Spoilers. ever win Spoiler one alert. game. Oh, no. They only <laughs> ever win one game. That's it. They lose every other game. But and they're like, you know, and they're like, man, like, you know, we're getting quite a few more points. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because people really love this mascot, and you know oh what? Like, uh, people are coming to the games more. But they're ne- they never win a game. They never win a game till the very, very end. But they're like, oh my gosh, well, the chicken, the chicken mascot guy, he's yeah. he's fantastic. Everyone loves it, and it, it's making the team better. It's like, no, it's not. That has nothing to do with it. You're crazy. That is, and they're like, at one point they get the, they lose the chicken mascot, but then they bring him back, and then one of their players dunks, and he's like, I can dunk. It's like, d- d- having the mascot there doesn't make him dunk. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, it's, it's you move. need to teach your team. You need to actually make them better players. It's like the mascots made us better. No, it hasn't. <laughs> What is this fever dream? No, but you see, Toby, it's a Christmas miracle. Like, you ought to go further. There's clearly it's clearly something. It's not even during Christmas. It's, it's a, like fall or it's something. A, it's I don't a, it's know. A, it's a Thanksgiving gift. I don't know. Let's go through all the holidays. It's a St. Patrick's if, Day like, if, gift. <laughs> if, if you ever want to see a film that both completely explains the the stupid obsession with high school sports and – accurately shows it while also showing it as a good thing it's the movie hatching pete because it is ridiculous and stupid and if you have a single brain cell you're like this is dumb but this is how a lot of people in america treat high school sports well i mean that feeds into that answers it perfectly then like when i asked you about like wow that's kind of crazy to me, man. I yeah. mean, maybe I'm just in a worlds away situation no, it's, but it's it sounds crazy like that much coverage no but it's games. it's amazing like uh it's fantastic to see this world and sometimes you don't even uh know what's going on and then you kind of look into it and you're just like what is what is what is this what yeah is, why do you care so much about this i don't know man like the way you make it sound it's like you know in the avengers movie it's like oh you know thanos has wiped out half the population but the the, the uh, beverly high school team managed to get to the finals and only two of their team members have been snapped so they're okay it was like that that it's like well and then the guy in the studio thank you very much janine yes it is great to know that those two members have not, are the only one casualties but the game rages on the game of high school f- uh, basketball and it's like what you want to talk about thanos no Dude. no no <laughs> Do you remember, right, they're like, well, two members have uh, left, but both of them were on the bench, so uh, play on. <laughs> play on. Um, there's actually, you, oh my gosh, I was a, I was a bench warmer growing up. You, you ever play any sports for it? Oh, uh, dude, I, I was a, I was a really kind of, until I like turned maybe 18, I was a pretty athletic kid, so mm-hmm. I played a lot of sports, man. Okay. Um, started with tennis. I was actually a tennis tournament player mm-hmm. for a number of years. I don't know if okay. you know. I don't think you know that about me, but I was a tennis tournament player. I I think you've told me at least once, but I know much more about you in track and cross country. Exactly. So anyway, tennis was how it started, and then 
I, everybody grew taller and I didn't. It's a gateway drug. <laughs> everybody grew taller oh, and no. I didn't. And I was like, oh, no, I can't play this. And it's like, don't worry, son, there's always badminton. So I started to play badminton. But again, it's like for fun. So recreationally. And squash. My dad, yeah. my, Actually, my father has done a lot. He's a boxer, race car driver, squash player, soldier. He's, he's kind of the man. And uh, he uh, happens to be an ultra marathon runner. So he got me introduced to... Oh, no, before that, I started to do triathlon training. So running, cycling, and swimming at the same time. I happened to be kind of a swimming... Wow. I happened to be a pretty good swimmer when I was 14, 15. Um, more endurance than speed, but I was really... My form was great. Um, but then I... That kind of fizzled out too, like as studies took over. So I, I eventually came to a point where I'd kind of cycled through. Like, I, I was a good defender in football. That also kind of ended. So... But the thing I kept, by the way, I was, I'm, this is such a showboaty thing, but I was a judo, I, I did judo, and I was the captain of my team. Mm. Um, but yeah. I couldn't, but again, like, I was too young to procure the, the black belt. I got to the brown belt, um, and they were like, no, you have to wait. Mm. And by then, I was, like, entering secondary school. It was very young, very young. So, asterisks of this wasn't mm. last week. This was this was, like, when I was 9 or 10 or 11. Or 11. Um, mm. So, I moved on to... Um, if you ever think about going back to get your black belt? I mean, dude, right now, I mean, look, I've been through, like, so much back ache and um, leg pain and all. Like, I, I don't know if I could go back into judo, so it'll take a whole... I have, I have too many indie films to make which won't make money. Like, I don't know how I'm going to factor, squeeze in judo to, to yeah. into that life. But but anyway, I moved eventually Maybe. to find my calling in running because that was, like, something my dad really endorsed. So I ended up doing a lot of long distance running, cross country, not so much track and field because, um, again, I'm not, much, I'm not much of a speed freak. I'm more, like... Uh, endurance runner, endurance athlete. Um, so yeah, that's a long answer to your question. Just gave me a chance to show off a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. but I did uh, do a lot of sport. I don't think I was a bench warmer for the because um, there were um, we had PE classes, physical education classes, and they would make us do basketball every once in a while. Then we had a, one coach, Mr. Wellington. He would make us do basketball, and I would be a pretty, pretty like. Ritualistically, a bench warmer, a bench warmer. Sorry, because I wasn't tall enough to mm -hmm. be selected for anything. So, there you go, man. Yeah. That is the story of my life. <laughs> That's everything. That's everything. Like, from beginning to end. That's it. Oh, and I also like when they I make a music. Yeah. <laughs> when they make a music biopic about you, it's going to be that period of time, and that like the movie will then end, and they'll be like, yeah, and it's like, yeah, but when did he write all those songs? It's like, oh well, later, and they'll be like. Then he wrote yeah, on, in the went end, on yeah. to go to the Hall of Fame and be like the greatest <laughs> musician of all time. <laughs> it's like if they made like a oh my god that's a genius idea though like if they made like a Gandhi film or no like a I don't know it's like Gandhi was born and it's him playing with like a leaf in the village when he's five and then it cuts to black and it's like he went on to become a civil uh, like to liberate India <laughs> in independent like they don't even show it's that. Like, why why didn't we see that that sounds like it's the impressive part that we should see it's like no 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 you uh, trust me you want to see. This you really you, gets you, you really the character. exactly it's like, seems like a pretty empty head. It's like this really pretentious European director in Shay is like you understand his psyche for why he became this type of person. It's like him playing with a rock, you know, in a playground. <laughs> when he's six. It's like, but now you really it's, know, uh... like you see his motivation as a character. <laughs> Oh God! Um... Billy, aren't we all like Gandhi trying to get back our leaf and rock? Isn't that all that we are trying to do? Can't you not empathize? Have you never had a rock or leaf that has left you? And then you're like, where are you, rock? Where are you, leaf? Where did you go? I do not understand. You man, are here. Man, it sounds and like you are gone. Bro, bro, it sounds like you're singing a song. It sounds like you're rapping lyrics now, man. That sounded like a, like a song. <laughs> Oh God. Okay, listen. On that, on that very strange note, um, we do have to call it a, a, a night for this. Um, okay. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. Um, clocked in at ninety minutes, which is nice. Wow. It's the length of the Incredible Hulk movie. I don't know why I said that. Um, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Um, so th yeah, man. I I um I suppose like let's till the next episode. Like uh, we have a lot of ground to cover moving forward. Uh, a whole lot of new mm -hmm. guests, uh, fresh slate of folks for you to, for you guys to, you listeners to all kind of. Um, listen to I suppose where, where was I going with that um, yeah so uh, yeah. be sure to check us out uh, on Instagram at uh, tlstate.cinema and leave a like uh, on this on this video if you enjoyed this um, yeah. if you got through it and you enjoyed it and uh, subscribe obviously it's going to help us yeah. out a lot um, and yeah um, Toby am I yeah. missing am I missing like, more promotional content tell me comment 
down below what you want ah, us to see and that's talk the, about. That's or like, the one. If there's a topic that's important to you, that's be sure one. to hit that bell icon. That's really important so you get like know when there's a new episode. It's like every Saturday, right, Freed? Or yeah, pretty whatever. much depends. It and, yeah, uh, if I'm if I'm out like if I'm and, if I'm trying to play tennis, then it won't be on Saturdays, but probably. Yeah. And Too you short. know what? Go follow us on Letterbox if you want. Like we, uh, I do stupid stuff on there, but Freed's got much more impressive stuff, and we <laughs> we definitely watch a lot of movies because uh, that's what we do, I guess. We definitely watch a lot of movies because that's what we do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, it's, I, it's I, just what you do. It's just you know? what we do, man. I don't know, man. If people watch this episode and 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 then like it came to that point, they're like, I'm not sure they watch a lot of movies. <laughs> based on what we've been saying <laughs> but um anyway so friends no yeah um absolutely though toby's right um we we are um, always trying to hope and tell us if there are any topics you want us to cover and uh, any films you want us to watch we'll watch it so um anyway thanks for tuning in guys and uh, take care stay safe and until next time